that what I have to say will interest you. On this wonderful world of Disney, a young boy trying to become a man, a top cowhand with dreams of bigger things. These next couple of months, I'm going to be rodeoing. And if you tag along with me, I'll tell you flat out, you can dang well earn your keep by taking care of my tack. On your feet, both of you. It's far enough. One for murder and return of reward $500. Many obstacles and a dark secret await the boy and the Bronx Buster coming up. And now we present the boy and the Bronx Buster. Horses we own, Pie and Clyde. They're getting kind of old and sore footed. Now, just what is it you're trying to say, Todd? Well, remember how you was talking about how you was going to go down to the public auction and buy some old horses for riding, plowing, and such? Yeah, well, I still mean to, Todd, if they don't cost too much. Well, I was just thinking, what if we were to get them free? What on earth are you talking about? <laughs> Those wild horses we saw running loose in the hills. They're on our land. That means they belong to us. Why don't we get that Mr. Winslow over there to break them for us? Lamb, you wouldn't seriously consider doing that, would you? Well, I can't see any harm in talking to Mr. Winslow about it, get his opinion on it. But wild horses? Most all horses out there were wild one time or another. I don't know. While you two horse experts are discussing business, I'm gonna go over there and get me some cool and lemonade. You want some? No, no thanks. No, it's all right. Uh, Mr. Winslow! Uh, my name is uh, Lim Thompson. Howdy. Uh, this is my nephew, Todd. Hey, Todd. Hi, Most folks call me Cal. Well, uh, Cal, uh, Todd may have got a kind of a proposition. That is, if it uh, makes sense to you. Just about every proposition makes sense to me. What you got in mind? Well, the truth is, I'm in the market for horses. And Todd here thinks that you can break some wild horses that are running in the hills near our place. I seen you right. Bet you there's not a horse amongst them that you can't break. <laughs> Did you ever hear, boy? Sooner or later, all horses get rode and all riders get thrown. I've just been lucky out here today. But will you do it? Well, I had planned to pull out right after the rodeo. Uh, I'll be uh, willing to pay you whatever's fair. You would, huh? Well, I expect I might have a few days with little or nothing to do. 
the only thing is now, the going price for breaking wild stocks is $10 a head. Is that all right? Is that agreeable to you? Agreed. OK. <laughs> all right, now this depends if we can round them up and corral them. I get to get over here and show these boys how to ride saddle <laughs> Place to run. They quiet down some. Just look at that big old stallion in there. Hey, he's a pretty one, ain't he? You can't take a fancy to him, huh? You favor my guess. It takes some real break in that one. What are we gonna do with him now? Well, we just set a horse is easy and let him get used to the idea of us being here. Why don't you go fetch that pole and a rope? Keep it pinned up here. Stay somewhere down some. Then we'll cut out six or seven of the best ones. Including that big old stein there? We'll start out with that one. Uh. Go on now. Well, that's, that's about half a day's work, ain't it? Where will you go when you leave here, Cal? Oh, St. John's, most likely. Is there going to be a rodeo there? Mm-hmm. Coming up next week. Sure must be something. Traveling all around like you do. Yeah, there's a lot of country out there. More than a man can see in one lifetime, I tell you. You know, I've seen mining towns. It was all dried up, just turned to dust. I've seen other towns where it was like they were celebrating the 4th of July every day. Being in rodeos must be exciting. Well, that's got its ups and downs. Mostly downs if you're a rodeo and cowboy. You'd know more about what I was talking about if you've been flowed real hard a couple of times. Hey, how about some coffee, Lem? Yeah, sure. Still in all, it beats plowing. Building fence lines from sun up till dark. Oh. Uh huh. Sounds like you got a notion maybe taking up rodeo on yourself someday. I reckon I would like to. You would. Well, I tell you what. We get that wild bunch of corral and I start to breaking them. I'll give you a chance to saddle bronc ride, and how'd you like that? Would you? Well, if you're gonna be a rodeo, you might as well start learning right now. What you in for? I remember what I told you. Just keep a tight hold on him, but don't fight him. Just try and go with him. All right? Let him go. Ride him, ride him, Tom. Oh, ride him, boy. Ride him. You all right, Todd? I should have stayed on him longer than that. <laughs> Listen, you did all right. 
think you got through it. You should have seen me the first time I ever tried to ride one. Sure did, Todd. Cal says that stallion's one of the finest looking horses he's ever seen. Said he should make a good saddle horse. Cal says. Seems like here lately you place an awful lot of store on what Cal says. Yes, ma'am. I guess I do. That's the way, Cal. Very good. Well, you did all right, Cal. <laughs> right. <laughs> you uh, sure enough earned your wages all right. <laughs> I'll tell you, this time I thought that stallion was going to be too much for me. <laughs> I guess it's still hard for me to picture any of those horses ever being able to pull a buggy or a plow. <laughs> They're just going to take some gentlemen down some there, Miss Thompson. I think you're going to be surprised. Hey, look at that red tail. That friend of yours, that boy? I call him Hannibal. Well, he's uh, been with us almost two years now. Uh, sort of like he's a doctor. I suppose it's kind of a silly superstition, but... I always get the feeling, as long as he's up there watching over us, that we and our loved ones will always be safe. Now, Cal, uh, I promised you when I hired you that you could uh, have the pick of a lot. You made up your mind yet? Well, I tell you, Lynn, that little brown mare over there is a sound enough horse, all right. But if there's a stand out among them, it's got to be that big stallion. Ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> I expect that'd be my choice. Well, and he's yours. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something after all the rodeo and I've been doing, all these years I still ain't figured out a way to ride two horses at the same time. What do you say, boy? How'd you like to have that big stallion? You mean, you want to straight out give him to me? If it's all right with you, Uncle. All right. Thanks. Well, if I was you, I'd start studying up a name for him. I already have. Big. <laughs> that suits him, don't it? How'd you like to ride it? Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, now, wait a minute. Are you sure that's safe? Yeah, I think he's broke enough, Miss Thompson. Besides, I'll be in there to catch him. get afraid you wouldn't get back in time. You going somewhere, Cal? Oh, well, yeah. I finished my job here. Got to be moving on. I already said goodbye to your uncle and aunt. But can't you just stay a little while longer? <laughs> well, I don't see how. I mean, not if I'm going to get to that rodeo next week. Well, will you be coming back this way? Well, I don't know. I'm... I'm like that old red tail hawk up there, you know? I can't tell where I'm now. I'll be sure up next, I guess. Huh. You take good care of that stallion now, you hear? So long, boy. So long, Cal.
we found here in our new home. For these blessings, O oh Lord, we are truly grateful. Amen. Liam? Yeah. Todd? It's, um, it's plain you're uh, fretting over something, Todd. So you might as well get it said. I'll be leaving in the morning. You'll be leaving? Uh, when did you decide that? Something I've been thinking on a lot. Uncle Lem, I'd like for you to say it's all right. Be leaving. Instead of you waking up one morning, finding me gone. That's set on going, are you, Todd? Well, I think I know what put that notion in your head. If it hadn't have been Cal, it would have been somebody or something else. Now, we got to understand that um, Todd's in that in-between growing time. Boy to a man. Well, that's just it. Todd is still just a boy. Go see to your Aunt Mary, Todd. And Todd, now remember something. Your Aunt Mary raised you ever since your ma and pa passed away. You mean an awful lot to her, Todd. talk to you. Oh, what's there to talk about? You made up your mind. You got your uncle's approval. What's it trying to explain? If I can. It's something burning inside me. Almost kin to bottom fever. Aunt Mary, it's like something I have to do. Oh, but the country out here, it's it's just so wild and unsettled. I figure I can catch up to Cal on a day's hard ride. Don? Isn't there isn't there anything that I can say or, or do to make you change your mind? Hmm? I'm sorry. But I promised to be back to help Uncle Lum with the harvest come the end of the summer. Well, if there's nothing I can do to stop you, then we're gonna pray to the good Lord every night to watch over you. And Todd, there's something else I want you to know. Your Uncle Lem and I have grown very fond of, of Cal, too. Now, you go on in there and eat your supper, because I don't want you going to bed your last night at home on an empty stomach. Go on. You take care of yourself now, Todd, you hear?
evening, Cal. Would you like to tell me what you're doing here? Well, I was hoping you'd let me ride along with you. Ride along with me? Where to? Any place you go, I guess. Oh, I see. Uh... <laughs> well, listen, I, I, I... See, I can't have no boy hanging on to my shirt tail every time I hit. I didn't run off, if that's what you're thinking. Well, no, I... My Uncle Lem, he told me he was all right. Well, I don't care what your Uncle Lem told you. I'm telling you what I'm telling you. Now, you... Yeah, well, you can have some supper and you can stay the night, but you, the first thing in the morning, now, you're heading back home. You hear me, boy? But, Cal, I won't be no bother to you. You bet you won't be no bother to me. Just tie your horse back there with mine. Well, go on. Well, you unsaddle him, I'll slice up some meat here. Yeah, if you just give well, me... Well, you can talk to your blue in the face. It ain't gonna do you no good. Just, just do like I tell you. All right? Better go give that a look, see. Yeah. Up here. Over by the fire, cowboy. That's far enough. Now, just where you got your poke? <laughs> I sure hate to disappoint you, boys, but you call me between jobs. Now, we ain't gonna talk about this too much before we start looking. Listen, I ain't got enough money to to buy a penny jawbreaker in a candy store. Ain't that the truth, boy? See if he's lying. Now, it appears like he's lying to me, don't he? He just hates liars. <laughs> now that you two got what you was after, I'd advise you to move on. Did you hear that? He's advising us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, just, will you stop squirming? Just sit still. And then we'll get this thing unloosed. Just let me do it, will you? Boy, to skin you alive for jumping me the way you've done. Just 
when I had them two scavenged and saddle tramps back in my sights. I'm real sorry, Cal. Yeah, we're sorry. I ain't gonna get my money back, is it? Where's my gun? Cal. I didn't know it was you. Next time. Well, there ain't gonna be no next time. And I'll tell you something else, we ain't waiting the morning neither. Now you're heading out of here tonight. We just go there and start saddling up. Is that understood? Follow me again, ain't you? Nope. Well, what are you doing out here then? Passing through. Figure if you don't want me to ride along with you, I can find work on my own. That's downright mule headed, boy. There's some men like like jumped us last night are swarming all over these parts. I reckon I know that. Oh, do you? Yeah, well, they'll have that horse and saddle of yours quicker in a minute. I'm still going, Cal, no matter what you say. Boy, I couldn't hold my head up. I couldn't look a preacher in the eye again if I'd let you go traipsing off here all by yourself. Meaning I can ride along with you? Meaning it looks like I ain't got no other choice. All right, now, you listen. These next couple of months, I'm going to be rodeoing. And if you tag along with me, I'll tell you flat out, you can dang well earn your keep by taking care of my tack. I sure will. Yeah, well, I mean taking good care of it. Folks, like flies buzzing around the honey jar. 
just wait and to plunk down their money and buy up old Buckshot's wares. Gee, up there, son. And now, folks, winner of the calf roping event in 14 seconds, a new record hereabouts, Cal Winslow. Now, folks, we'll have a short intermission before the last event in today's rodeo. Bulldog it. And before the last event, if all you people of Palomas will give me your attention for just one minute, I'm sure that what I have to say will interest you. Well, uh, come on, all of you. Come on, young, old, all you kiddies, come on. Folks, what higher aim can man attain than conquest over human pain. I am referring, of course, to Dr. Melvale's extract of rare herbs and fruit salts on sale this week only at a special reduced price, just four bits a bottle. Now, this here extract that I am holding is guaranteed to cure hazardous brain tipple. Obesity, hysteria, liver disorders, blushing, loss of manhood, rheumatism, and gout. French sewn corsets that expand to any size. <laughs> well, almost any size. Automatic hair curlers, imported wigs. Sorry, folks, I just saw an old friend I haven't seen in years. I'm temporarily closed for business. Catch you later on in town. Hey, Emmick. The name's Cal. Cal Winslow. Well, I meet so many people uh, traveling as much as I do. Names sometimes slip my mind. Uh, was down around the panhandle I last run into you, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right, Buckshot. It was down around the panhandle. How are you, boy? I'm just fine, sir. I'm Todd. Yeah, uh, uh, why don't you go see to the horse? He'll probably be pretty thirsty. Just give him enough to wet his mouth for now, okay? Can't have him all filled up with water for the bulldog. Come on, let's go, let's go. Nice boy, that one. Like you've been brought up real proper. You know, Emmett? Uh, cow. I didn't figure on running across anybody from down around home here in the Arizona Territory. Seeing as how I did, I was thinking we ought to have a drink or two for old times' sake. All right, Buckshot. Uh, we just got the bulldog in the go, and then, uh, supposing I meet you in the saloon in town as soon as it's over with, how's that? I'll be there, waiting for you. First up in the bulldogging is a cowboy from right here in Palomas. You all know Billy Butler. Let's go, sundown. All right, get you going your horse. We're pulling out of here. What? Cal, you got a good chance of winning the whole round with the bulldog. Look, you want to go with me, then do like I tell you, all right? $500, Jay, you have U.S. Marshal Abilene. Where's this Emmett Turner now? Out at the rodeo, but it's almost over. He'll be in town directly. How do you know? Well, because uh, him and me is meeting in a saloon for a drink. And he must be a friend of yours. You might say that. <laughs> I was just wondering what kind of a man that makes you, turning a friend into the law. 
Well, ain't it plain how much it pains me to do it? But uh, it's my sacred duty as a God-fearing, law-abiding citizen. And the reward money's got nothing to do with it, huh? Oh, I got to admit it crossed my mind. I'm human. You better put out a parcel of glasses. Them cowboys are gonna be real thirsty. attention for just a minute. I've got something here I would like to show you. Well, what in tarnation is it? Boys, the first time seen west of the Missouri. This here is an electropathic battery belt. <laughs> amongst you is ailing. Then I say you need one of these electropathic battery belts, guaranteed to restore circulation and digestion. Uh, them's first signs of body decay, boys. And guaranteed to restore ankle bones, knee bones, and all vital organs. Now, where is that cowboy that uh, won the calf roping today? I'd like him to help me give you boys a demonstration. Now, uh, you mean Cal Winslow? Mm hmm That'd be him. Yeah, well, he rode off of here with that boy he was with. Rode off? Right after he won the calf roping. And that cowboy, not showing up after giving his word. Just ain't honorable. But with winter coming on soon and him being a rodeo or not, not too many towns he'd be likely to stop at. We'd be running on to him again. <laughs> Giddy up, sundown. You expect there's someone following us, Cal? No, I'll give you that notion. Well, you keep on looking back. Ever since we left Palomas. Why did we leave? Well, boy, maybe someday we'll sit down and talk it all out. Right now, we gotta start looking for us a place to camp for the night. Get up. like no rodeoer. Oldie. Howdy. What can I do for you? Hot day for that, isn't it? Uh, Cal Winslow's the name. Pat Hutchins. Oh, and this is my daughter, Jenny. Hi. This is uh, Todd here. Hi, Hi, Todd. That's a nice horse you got there. Thanks. What's it there for boarding down our horses to left to the rodeo? Well, with feeding and water, run a dollar a day for both. That sounds fair. Couldn't tell us uh, which hotel's got the tamest bed bugs in town, could you? Well, I'm afraid you don't have much choice. The only place down to put up is that hotel over there. Oh, well, is that right? It's not too bad. Thanks. Come on, boy, let's go check in. Right. Come on, honey. Help me get these horses away. Little horse. Hi, Todd. Hello, Jenny. You're just in time. For what? To see a trick I've been teaching Big. What kind of trick? Here. I'll show you. Put this in your pocket. But leave some of the show him. Yeah, that's right. Well, what do I do now? Turn around so Big can see it. Come on, boy. Go get it. Come on, Big. Come on, boy. <laughs> That's it, Big. That's something. 
I think he took a little bit of me with it. <laughs> Don't you think he's a smart horse? Yeah. Is that all you do, is teach him tricks? Oh, no. Come on, big. Come on, big. I've been practicing up on my rodeo one. Callenby, we figure we'll wait a time before I enter. Enter what? Bareback riding? Of course, one of the bareback depends a lot on the luck of the draw. Oh? There's all kinds of bucket horse. Sunfishes, spinners, fallen back horses. I wouldn't care to draw a fallen back horse. I seen a cowboy sat on and nearly squashed at the last rodeo I was at. You know, if you'd like to try him out, Pollen's a horse that does a little bucking. He does? Fireball's just a stumpy old little Mustang. Of course, Ryder knows what he's doing, could probably stay on him all day without once getting throwed. Heck, I don't think I'm gonna ride him. I mean, if he's all that easy. Well, you want to keep up your practicing, don't you? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't hurt none. I guess you're right. I can't let myself get rusty. Hey, you sure ain't no mean old brush buster that's never been rolled before? Fireball? Shoot, no. I ride him myself all the time. You do? Rode him just yesterday. Heck, I guess I'll have to give him a try. I mean, if you could... I'll try him. But first, I have to finish cleaning Cal's tack. I'll fetch Fireball while you're doing it. He's out the pasture. <laughs> Looks to be more burrow than horse. Oh, you shouldn't say things like that, Todd. Not in front of Fireball. All I meant was, he don't exactly look like no ball of fire. Now, when you get on him, just hold on tight. Fireball will do the rest. If he's of a mind to today. It's not the longest exhibition of bareback riding I ever saw. That little old Mustang's kind of testy. Yeah, he is kind of testy, ain't he? That's what we call a kangaroo bucker. Don't see much of his kind anymore. But when I do, I just take a deep seat, hang on, and do a lot of praying. Jenny, you ought to be ashamed of yourself putting that poor old boy up there on that dirt and stomping bang tail. Todd's been doing a lot of practicing. I just was wondering how he'd do on Fireball. Yeah, well, we sure found out, didn't we? I mean, you know, she's right, you know. You're gonna be a rodeo or you gotta learn to ride all kinds of horses. Maybe you ought to try and ride Fireball again. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think we should let him rest up a bit. Yeah, he does look all wore out, don't he? Guess it's me that needs the resting up. Oh. Junction City, Santa Rita. 
Sundown, if you was that cowboy and was wanted by the law, which one of them roads would you take, huh? Well, you sure are a big help. <laughs> I knew you'd take your sweet time making up your mind. If that cowboy is in Santa Rita, we'll smoke him out this time for sure. We'll collect that reward money on him yet, lest no buckshot's losing his touch, and that there just ain't likely. So, uh, let's see now. A sack of cornmeal, a box of brown sugar, a bowl of uh, blue cloth, uh, uh, two uh, spools of white thread. Then, and, Thompson, uh, you're hiding something from me. Well, how can you tell? Well, maybe because we've been married for nearly 18 years. Uh, it's from Todd. Uh, Todd. I thought I'd wait and let you open it. Here's his handwriting to improve some, don't you? Uh, now go on, read. Dear Aunt Mary and Uncle Liam, Big and me are doing just fine. I've been working with him a whole lot and I'll bet you'll be surprised when you see some of the things he can do. Cal has already won two, two... All around. And I'm, oh, trying to learn to rodeo, too. But I guess I'm not too good yet. I hope everything is fine at home. And how is Hannibal? I remember my promise, and I'll be back home pretty soon to help you with the harvesting. Love, Todd. <laughs> Look how he spells harvesting. Yeah. Dear Aunt Mary and Uncle Lynn, Big and me are doing just fine. Howdy, Jenny. We ain't you coming? Where to? To the rodeo. Rodeo is tomorrow. I ain't talking about the one for grown ups. I entered you in the bareback and the barrel racing. How come you didn't say nothing about this before? I, I know how hard you've been practicing, and I wanted to surprise you. Well, you sure enough did. We do this every year, the day before the big rodeo. <sighs> Where can you fix it so I get to ride fireball again? Oh, shoot, no. We draw out of a hat, the same as any rodeo. We? You mean you're going to rodeo too? Of course. Just calf roping, though. Come on, be starting directly. You go on. I'll, uh, settle a bit. Rodeo will now begin. First event is calf roping. First up is Tommy Arnold. Tommy's time, 47 seconds. Uh, Next up, Jenny Hutchins. Twenty-eight 
seconds. Winner of the calf roping, Jenny Hutchins. Let him go! This is it in today's rodeo, bareback riding. We'll be starting in a minute. Huge draw. Name's Moonlight. Well, he's part Billy Goat. Just watch out he don't go back bucking on you. Drive Fireball. Which one of them is he? That's all of little Mustang at the end. Huh. Just my luck drawing him. Be like floating on feathers. I wouldn't be too sure about that. He's a lot meaner than he looks. You just see how easy I ride him. First up in the bareback, Emery Winfield. Oh. His horse, Stormwind. His horse, Moonlight. Stay on it, Todd! Keeps that up, he's gonna make a rodeo one day. Good going, Todd. Thanks. Well, it appears you practice and pay it off, son. You left the rest of them boys standing in the shade, didn't you? Last rider up in the bareback, Walter Gate. His horse, Fireball. This is something I've just been dying to see. Well, come on, horse, back! <laughs> I can't win the bareback riding if you don't start bucking. Yeah. I thought somebody said this horse was mean. Sometimes it works if you pull his tail. like floating on feathers. Winner of the bareback riding, Todd Thompson. <laughs> no, you could win it, Todd. Last event today will be barrel racing. Them entered are Emery Winfield, Walter Gates, as soon as he gets the mud cleaned off him, <laughs> and Todd Thompson. I will see how fast old Big can cut them barrels. Pretty fast. Let you go beat him, boy. Now, the rules are all riders have to ride their own horses. Are you ready, Emery? Go! <laughs> Emery's time 20 seconds. Next up will be Walter Gates. Get set, Walter. Go! Walter's time, 21 seconds. Todd Thompson is next up. Get set. Go! Todd's time and the winning time, 18 seconds. 
second. That's the end of the rodeo, folks. <laughs> you do for us in one day. That ain't a bad day's work. It wasn't only me. It was Big here. And a boy, Big. Well, you keep that up, you know. I'm gonna have to retire. Cal. Isn't that the two men? Two men that bushwhacked me and Cal on the trail. Took all of Cal's money. Come on. This is something I gotta see. Fair change with ten dollars. Sixty dollars you stole from me, wasn't it? Money these two stole from me a while back. No. Marshal, he's a liar. No, he ain't. Because I was with him when you stole it and left us all tied up. I know these two. You want to prefer charges? What for? I got my money back. I warned the both of you the last time you were in town about causing a ruckus. Now get to riding. Just a minute. That ought to cover the damages. Now, what's a boy your age doing in a saloon and brawling at that? I saw Cal was in trouble. I came to help. And a mighty big help he was, too, Marshal. Forget it this time. But you scat out of here. And don't you let me catch you in the saloon again, you hear? Boy, Todd, you sure was something to behold. <laughs> Didn't do that much. I'll bet you that one's still a seeing stars after you whomped him over the head with a chair. <sighs> I guess I'll be going now. Where to? Well, to fetch some wild honey. I know where there's a bee tree. Not far from town, neither. There's nothing better than wild honey, especially on my Aunt Mary's biscuits. Well, I can make biscuits, too. Pa says they're as good as he ever ate. Of course, he is partial. Well, what are we standing around here for? You mean you want to go, too? I got nothing else to do. Well, then come on. I'll go fetch big. Cal 
first meet up? When he broke some wild horses for my Uncle Lem. One of them he broke was big. Can't say I ever seen a finer horse. Me neither. Here goes. I think it's about time we got ourselves out of here. Come on. Northern bees come down from the Dakotas for hyphen. Sundown! Sundown! You can't go fucking on me now! After all these years of me providing for you, you want me to meet my maker stung to death? Oh, stop gone you anyway, Sundown! Like those bees done chased old Buckshot in a hole. Buckshot? Buckshot? Ain't he that old peddler man? You know him too? Met up with him at Paloma's, where Cal was rodeoing. Knowing him ain't knowing much. Mr. Buckshot? Hey, Mr. Buckshot! The bees are gone now. Oh, now, now, you jug-headed ninny. The bees are gone. It's a shame about your hat, Mr. Buckshot. Uh, don't fret none, boy. This is getting kind of wore out anyhow. Remember me, Mr. Buckshot? Well, let's see now. Uh, where was it we last run across each other? Paloma's. That's right. You was with that cowboy, that, uh... That Cal. Yeah, Cal Winslow. That's right. Well, what happened? You and him split up, did you? Oh, no. Cal's back in town right now, waiting on the rodeo to start tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, good to hear that you two didn't have no falling out. <laughs> Ain't we met someplace too, girl? Last year you came through Santa Rita peddling your wares. Sold me a gold-plated ring. That's right. I remember now. Paid two dollars for that ring. Well, I must have slipped up. A gold ring is worth a sight more than that. <laughs> if it was gold, how come my finger turned green the next day? Oh. <clears throat> uh, it turned green a uh, bit. Uh. Well, I, I tell you what that was. I, I did a little uh, trade in with a drummer over in uh, Junction City, and uh, that's where I got those rings. Uh, well, it looks like I got took, don't it? <laughs> looks like you ain't the only one got took. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, girl. Uh, after I get into town and uh, open up for business, you can have any little old doodad you want from this here wagon, and it'll be on old Buckshot. Anything uh, not over two dollars, that is. Well, I'll be seeing you two in town. Oh, come on. He sure is some kind of old rascally character, ain't he? You just watch out, he don't go fooling you. I wouldn't trust him further than I can throw that old mule of his by the tape. I just want to make sure you don't go wandering off someplace.
something I can do for uh, you? Oh. <laughs> well, I was just admiring uh, the hat you got there in the window. How much you asking for it? That'll run you $12. Cash money. $12. That's so. Oh, darn foolishness. I come near losing that valuable piece. Pretty, ain't it? Well, it, uh, it's kind of different. Solid platinum. Solid platinum, mm -hmm. huh? I've got the one that matches it right here in my pocket. Take notice of the crest. Queen Victoria herself presented these cufflinks to my daddy. Uh, the old gal give them to him herself, did she? That's right. He left them to me in his will. I, uh, I don't suppose you'd be interested in doing any trading with them, say, uh, over that hat there? Well, I'm kind of sentimental about them cufflinks. But I suppose if a price was to be put on them, it'd run close to $20. Could make up the difference in cash. I think we can do business. Let's uh, step inside. You know, coming only once a year, we tend to get pretty excited about the rodeo. I guess to you, one bucking horse is just like another. Oh, I still get a few surprises now and then. Say, Cal, you ever get tired of it? Most of them you ain't on long enough to get tired of. No, I tell you, it ain't dull, no sir. <laughs> This here uh, picture on the wanted poster ought to tell the whole story. Wanted for murder, Emma Turner. Huh? Well, there's no doubt about it. He's been hanging around town for the past couple of days. Called himself Cal Winslow. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Marshal, uh, this here uh, small print there at the bottom, I believe it says something about the reward. You'll get your reward if we get Turner. Cal! Hey, boy. I'm taking old Danny out and limbering him up a little bit. Cal! Hey, where'd you get off to after that ruckus? I looked all over for you. I went to fetch some wild bee, honey, but Cal... <laughs> you really saw him when you get riled up, ain't you? Cal! What? What is it, boy? You know that old peddling man calls himself Buckshot? Yeah, what about him? He's here now. I heard him talking to the marshal. About what? You. About how your real name's Emmett Turner. And how the law is after you for murder. Cal. Is it true? My real name's Emmett Turner, boy. But I ain't never killed nobody in my whole life, and that's the truth. 
I know you didn't do it, Cal. Why is the law after you, then? Can't explain it now, Bob. I'll have to tell you later. The marshal's out there. He'll be heading over here in a minute. I gotta get out of here. Well, where will you go? To the border, I guess. Get across the Pegasus Hills and I'll make it over the Badlands. Badlands? That's 200 miles of desert. That's right. They'd like to attract me across that. Cal, what can I do? Listen, bring, bring my gear and as much food as you can get. You remember that bridge we, we passed when we first rode in here? I'll meet you there. It'll be dark in an hour, so you better wait till then. And just be careful, will you? Cal Winslow in there? Yeah. Frank, you go around and cover the back. Right. What's happened, Marshal? He's wanted in Texas for murder. That's right. At least that's the name he's been using. Can't rightly say where he is, Marshal. He rode off a little while ago. Marshal, ain't it plain to you the boy's lying? If I were Turner, I wouldn't tell anybody where I was heading either. And that includes the boy. My guess is he's probably heading for the border through Sioux Pass or Junction City. Unless, of course, he wants to try and make it across the Badlands. A lot of men have tried that. <laughs> Very few have ever made it. Marshal, you don't know him like I do. It would be like Emma Turner to do what ain't expected. I said I'd handle this. Peddler. Let's get riding, Frank. Uh, well, neither you or Emma Turner heard the last bull buckshot. You remember that, boy. Marshal, Marshal! You still got time to change your mind, Marshal. Marshal, you are headed the wrong way. Marshal, the Badlands don't mean nothing to Emma Turner. Why, he'd ride right into the fires of Hades. That's right, Frank. He thought the law was catching up with him. Marshal, don't forget, I've got rightful claim to that reward money. Uh, I understand uh, you got a few horses for renting out. Yeah, a few. Well, I'd like to rent me one of them. Uh, how much? Two dollars a day. And a twenty dollar deposit. Well, that's a little steep, ain't it? Depends on who I'm renting them out to. I'm real sorry to hear that, Todd. I know how much you think of Cal. I guess he didn't do it. Then why is Law hunting him? I don't know. He said he'd explain later. I'm meeting him outside of town as soon as it gets dark. Jenny, you won't tell nobody, will you? I mean, not even your pa? Of course not. If you don't want me to. Cal wants me to bring some food to him. But I can't get it at a store. Buckshot was to see me. He'd probably know who I was buying it for. Is that why you brought the saddlebags? Well, we got a plenty here. I reckon we can spare some. Thanks. Take all you want. I do all the cooking. Pa, he won't even miss it. Hey, 
tried to follow you, did it? Oh, no. Did you talk to the marshal? Yeah. What did he have to say? He figured he was headed for a junction city in the border. Yeah. <laughs> he and his deputy are headed out that way. Well, I suppose anybody but a fool would take that trail. Cal? Yeah? You said before that you would tell me what you'd done. Why the law's after you? All right. There was a man in this little West Texas town where I was raised. He used to have a habit of trying to drink up all the whiskey he could get his hands on. Sometimes they get pretty rowdy. Well, one night, me and my cousin, Billy Joe, got to Tom Foolin' with him. We just, uh, Tom Foolin', he drew a gun. Well, Billy Joe was pretty rowdy too, see? So he took the gun away from the man. I don't think he meant it to. But the gun went off. Did you kill him? Yeah. I tell you, we were so scared, we just... We weren't even thinking, we just took off. We just lit out that night. Split up. I've been running ever since. But you didn't do it. Boy, the law says it don't make no difference who pulled the trigger. A man is dead. Have you seen you again? Boy, you got rodeo in your blood now, just like me. I mean, you keep working with those big. You... I expect someday I'm gonna stumble across the two of your rodeo on somewhere. <laughs> you call it, Buckshot? Uh-huh. I figure a man is like a horse. Runs so far before he gets winded. Then he finally gets caught up to. Same thing had to happen to you, too. Sooner or later. But old Buckshot, he's gonna be there. When that reward money passed out. You wouldn't shoot an unarmed man, would you? Would you ever get the idea you was a man, Buckshot? Now, you better hightail it out of here before I change my mind and put a bullet through in you.
Look sharp. No time, boy. like you ain't gonna pick up that reward money, don't it? Well, you ain't gonna flat quit hunting them, are you? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Well, you can't do that. Tell you what, peddler. Supposing you go after them, the buzzards will have your bones picked clean before you're halfway across that desert. Marshal, 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 there's one other thing I gotta tell you. What is it, peddler? My wagon, you know, I had it just off from town. Well. It and everything on it got stole last night by prowling sneak thieves. Real sorry to hear that. Well, ain't you gonna do nothing about it? I've been in the saddle all night and half the day. And right now, I'm going to rest. Well, you will go after them that stole my wagons. And now, you don't, and I, you will. I'll have the law on you. Did it ever occur to you, peddler? I am the law here. Say goodbye. Will you come back and see us? I'd sure like that. I might even let you ride Fireball again. I think I'll practice up before that. Set 
Todd's come home. Oh! Todd! Oh, no, Todd! Oh, I'm so glad you came. Hey, hey, you can feel that grip. Yeah, but you grow to this. Did you smell my biscuit? Oh, yeah, Look at you. Looks like somebody else has come to welcome you home. Howdy, Hannibal! There's something, Aunt Mary. I still remember something you once said. And as long as Hannibal's up there watching, us and them we love would always be safe. can happen when eight adults in their 20s live in one of LA's trendiest neighborhoods and face the challenges of life in the 90s. Experience their loves, conflicts, frustrations, and joys as the summer heats up on Melrose Place. That's Wednesdays at 9 on Fox 5.